Mm. Oh, that is the best coffee of the entire week. Hey, it's Mark Shepard. It's Saturday, January 20th. It is the Morning Cryptos. We're going to just check in and see what's going on real quick here. Then we can go out and play. Uh, and uh, let's just get at it. Let's get at it. Start the music. Okay, well, looks like we are having us a little recovery, hopefully anyway. Um, let's quick look at the news, see if there's any new FUD to uh, play with. Uh, there's some talk <coughs> talk this morning about Lightning Network. And uh, this article I actually did read while I was waiting for the water to boil. Uh, and it's, it makes a really good point that Lightning Network actually may not solve Bitcoin's you know, scaling challenge, um, which is, you know, quantity, speed, and security. That's really the trifecta. Um, and uh, when I'm pissed at Bitcoin, I agree with those guys. I agree that, you know what, this thing is just, it's just not working. It's just not working. Why is it so valuable if it doesn't even work, you know? And, uh, then I flip and I get into this other head, this other mindset where, you know what, Bitcoin is what it is and it has been tested and it's, they're going to figure it out. They'll find a way, blah, 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 you know, so I just kind of go back and forth between those two points and not being technical, I don't really know, you know, all I know is what the technical people tell me and it just seems like there's still this great debate, you know, and that's why I find other projects so much more appealing. Um, because they are, they are solving the problem. You know, it's sometimes I feel like Bitcoin is a Volkswagen Beetle and it's trying to compete with a bunch of flying cars and we'll, we'll get the Volkswagen Beetle to fly by, we'll, we'll put on some wings and we'll, you know, we'll put a, some aerodynamic stuff, we'll slap band-aid stuff around it and then it'll fly, but it's never going to fly, you know, because it wasn't designed to fly, right? So that's the that's the question. It is the breakthrough. It is the leader. It is the one that everybody's heard of. It is the one that gets talked about on the news all the time. However, uh, I don't know. I do not know. We we'll shall we shall see. So there's no big fud here going on. Uh, battle testing lightning. So the lightning network. 26 schools start to play with it. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, well, I like I like missing your stories. Okay. Um, so, I don't know. Looks like... Let's just type in Bitcoin price just for giggles here. See what it's doing. Okay, we're back up to 12,528. Uh, somebody here at Coindesk says we're stuck. We need quick progress to avoid further losses or avert further losses. Bitcoin price threat fears Bitcoin will crash as Merkel and Macron propose regulation. Bitcoin price warning: cryptocurrency bubbly might totally collapse. See, this is the Daily Express. This is this is the mainstream, right? This is what they do. Um, <clears throat> and if Bitcoin disappeared. It did, did actually crash. We actually have a whole lot of other projects that I think would be okay after the initial shock. But it looks like it is recovering today. And let's quick look at the one hour chart. And I drew all these lines. Hopefully they don't bother you. But the lines really help me in my brain. And uh, I have all the moving averages off. Let's turn them back on. And, uh, you know, we have been on the one hour chart below the 200 hour line now for a little while. And we're just, we just crossed that. So that might be good news. 
and uh, yeah, still learning about averages. We got decent amount of volume down here, not a huge amount. It's a little bit less here. Um, the volume is in my way, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Let's see what the bolt, the uh, RSI is looking like here. On the one hour, you know, we definitely went deep into below the 30 a couple of times, three, four times, a little bit. Now we're just a little bit above the 70. So uh, what that means, I don't know. I'm still learning. <laughs> uh, but it looks like it looks like we are having some recovery murmurings here. Recovery murmurings. Murmur, murmur, murmur. Of course, it's not like boosting crazily, but you know what? Maybe that's okay. But we shall see. Uh, it just feels like it still wants to go back down. I don't know. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, a little bit of a boost, a little bit of a fluffy puff here, a little, little rise above its line of doom. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Well, not seeing a whole lot new here from yesterday. It's been, it's actually been a really good week for me in that there was so much less to do other than just stand back and wait, you know, and I just, I needed a break. And I think the markets are like that um, because they are people, you know, and uh, they do seem to have an energy that. <laughs> that is independent of what we want them to do. <laughs> so, all right. So it looks like Dash is on the rebound. This is exactly pretty much what I said yesterday. But, oh, look at this. EOS. EOS. Nice. EOS is really popped back. That's good. It looks like EOS has some legs and some energy. And that is a sweet thing. Good. Go EOS. Uh, Ethereum looks like it's making some recovery noises here. And, it, and Ethereum was way the hell up, too. So that's that's good, I guess. I guess it's all good. I guess everything's good, right? IOTA didn't quite uh, get back up into its swing, but it's working. It's working it a little bit here. Litecoin. What's going on with Litecoin? Hi, Litecoin. Uh, same deal. Looks a little bit like IOTA. Climb it up. Neo. Is Neo going to be right back in it? No. Neo's holding. Holding steady there. Good. Okay. <laughs> I feel I feel like uh, I feel like a, uh, a commentator on drying paint. And the paint looks like it's uh, drying. Yep. Uh, paint looks like it's drying here. Yep. Anyway. <laughs> when we say go, coming back. So... A lot of green. I think I'm about to sneeze. A lot of allergies this morning. Uh, quantum. Uh, I still think quantum's a good buy, even at 41. Um, if I had any cash left over, I would buy some, but I already bought some at 50, so gotta wait. Uh, XRP Ripple. There we go. Right back up into its pattern maybe <laughs> let's see ripples do another one hour chart real quick okay this is what i want to see on the one day chart with ripple i want to see a nice sideways trading range <laughs> i want it to be boring for a little while but we'll see that's what i want all right zcash looking like we're uh struggling here let me go back to one day chart yeah, it's coming back, coming back, yep. It always comes back slower, though, doesn't it? It always comes back slower. Let's look at Cardano against Bitcoin, just because we have a nice chart here, and that helps remind me that it's actually doing pretty well against Bitcoin. Um, let me look at it against the U.S. dollar chart. We have some nice recovery here. Like, Got to go to one hour, so we have enough data here. And uh, just uh, snug it up to the 200 hour here. So it looks like we might have some some recovery. Um, it's it's kind of slowed down here, but it hasn't boosted, boosted. But 
that's okay. I'm in at 75, so I'm I'm getting close. I'm getting close to my even spot for at least one of my buys. So that's it. All right. There's a lot of other stuff to look at, but people, it looks like we're recovering. It looks like we're going to make it, but we don't know. There we go. That was exciting news, and uh, I don't think I contributed much, but I, here's what I learned. And I said this yesterday, but I'll say it again, just in case you didn't watch yesterday's. Markets like this are volatile, right? And that's why everybody says, be prepared to lose everything you invest. Um, but it's still, it still doesn't feel very good when the markets move against you and you weren't anticipating it or ready for it. And so the big lesson is to be ready for it and partly... Partly the way we do that is to keep a percentage back, to not go all in. And I'm talking about your your trading account. I'm not talking about everything in your life, and hopefully you're not all in with everything in your life. Hopefully you haven't mortgaged your house and put it all into Bitcoin, which would be pretty ridiculous. But some people are doing that. And that's what the regulators are trying to protect people from, which is bullshit. It's just what they say. They just want their hands in the money, right? The regulators actually want their hands in the money, uh, and they will do that. So they probably will do that. But what's my point? The point is when I get into profit in the future, <laughs> I will take a certain percentage, and I will tuck it into either U.S. dollar tether or uh, over at Coinbase into my U.S. dollar wallet so that I have a liquid pool with which to buy bargains so that I can get in on the next crash, right? Now, hopefully we'll go into another little bull run here and I'll be able to suck in some profits and begin to practice setting some aside for the next crash because there will always be a crash, right? We had a crash in July, or let's say correction, not really a crash. These are just corrections. We had a correction in July. We had a correction in September. We had a little correction in, uh, I think, late November, early December. We had a little correction before Christmas, right? We had a little, we had a pretty big correction this week. So we have corrections at fairly regular intervals. Just because if you if you watch any chart, sometimes it's up, sometimes it drops, right? We have corrections, right? Um, this is the one. Uh, let's see, we got to go to a one day chart. I want to just point out where our corrections are, right? We had a correction here. That was in September. We had a correction here. That was in November. We had a nice big correction here before Christmas, right? And then things did pretty well again until this last week. So, we have boosts and we have busts, and that's a fact. The mistake a lot of us newer traders make is that we think it's going to just keep going up. We get used to that very quickly, very easily, and we don't take into consideration, okay, what are we going to do when this thing drops other than you know, sell and grab our profits, you know, and I was selling and grabbing profits because I didn't want to lose the profit, but then where was I going to put it? I put it into Bitcoin. Why into Bitcoin? Well, because that's the market. That's where the most liquidity is. But then you have to take the next step and either get it out of the, out of crypto in some shape or form so that you can step aside and let the market fall, then step back in. So that's really the thing I've been learning. I don't know why it's taken me so long to learn it, but it seems to be a hard thing to learn for me. So that's that's the big lesson this week. And uh, I'm kind of sticking to it, and uh, hopefully the markets will recover. Tomorrow's my day off, and typically on my day off, exciting things happen, and it's hard for me to take a day off, but we'll see if I can or not. But uh, I appreciate you guys very much. Thanks for sticking with me here, and... Uh, if this was remotely interesting to you, which I find it kind of hard to believe it was, if it was, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I don't really have anything new to bring to it other than what I've been saying all week is that 
this is real when you have money in it, and the more money you have in it, the more real it becomes. And ultimately, it's all still happening in our thoughts, in our minds, in our bodies, and on these screens, right? And yet, it's also happening in the world all around the world. And that's a pretty big concept to get your head around. So, hope you have a great Saturday. That's it for today. I love you guys. Peace, grooviness, over an hour. Start the music. <laughs>